Good day, YouTubers. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from all around the world. Working on the sales again this week. <clears throat> so last week we finished up the main mast for or the bottom sail. All the rigging to go with that. So we got the rest of those tied off everywhere on the deck. We got the lifting rigging moved. These two pulleys up underneath the crow's nest were on the wrong side. And I pretty swore if I look at the stinking mass plan, I bet you it shows it over there. But obviously it's not. These are double blocks. To help lift the mast down to the deck. And. You can see the mast right there. Or the yard arm. And the sail. It's on the front side of the mast facing the bow and the lifting pulleys are also on the front side but I had them on the back and it's similar to the foremast they're on the back back there too so uh, doubtful I did both of them wrong but I bet you that's what's wrong in the plans so anyway we got this one all furled up for display so it's not blocking your view down into the deck area and all the ropes that are involved with this mast and it's control are done and tied off we got this long one here that's going to the divot back on the rear of the ship and that goes through a little shiv that's mounted in the railing and then it ties off on a baling pin in the baling pin rack So that was quite a bit of work on that one yard arm. So I've started on the second yard arm, the next one up, and I've got mm, probably 70, 60% of the ropes done, ready to hang it. And I still got a few more to go. And uh, I ran out of thread. That tan part polyester is 70% polyester and 20 something, something percent cotton. And it's got it's got some thickness to it that I like compared to the regular thread. And that that kind of thread is for uh, buttons. Coates and Clark is the maker, but it's a button and, and craft thread. So it's really strong because it's got the polyester in it. And that's what I'm using for the dark colors too. And uh, instead of the normal stuff that came with the ship, which is all cotton and it's real fuzzy. And... They only have the brown and the tan. Yeah, there's some more of the 
it's not really a tan it's sort of a gray light gray color but i like this tan look better looks more like a hemp they would have made the rope out of back in the days the stuff that's black or dark brown is um been treated with creosote and tar and that's usually the standing rigging stuff that doesn't get changed very often whereas the running rigging will be adjusted and gets wore out more often so they would just use the raw hemp rope for that so this hemp rope is the color I'm going with for all the running rigging so I'm going to get set up here and we'll film finishing this uh, sewing up of this uh, mid sail for the main mast. This one's pretty big. I think this is the biggest sail in the kit. These three are for the forward mast. Then I got one here somewhere underneath this pile of paper for the top yard arm that's going to go on the main mast we'll do that one next after we get this one done and of course we're still doing other stuff at the same time we continue with the building of the ship so let me get everything set up here for sewing this up and uh We'll continue on with the filming. So our next set of running rigging for this sail, we got one that's going to go down here about three quarters of the way down the side up to the second pulley and then down to the deck and the same on the other side down to the deck and you can see those are labeled 829 three of them there and if we look on the deck plan it's going to show us that 829 or 828 hits a bunch of spots on the bailing pins So that'll be the one we do next. And we got our thread with a little bit of super glue on one end so we can feed it through the pulleys and we'll probably, <clears throat> because this plan doesn't really show me what what that is right there there's no detail for it you know i'm assuming that it would just tie on to the edge of the sail and that's for furling the sail up to close it along with this one up here where this other pulley is so In order to get that in the right spot, so I'm using these clamps to keep it spread out evenly like it would be when it's hanging. This is the end with the glue on it, so I don't want to put my needle in there. I want to sort of pre-estimate the length going down to the deck going through that second block and then over here and tying off leaving a little bit of room for tying and there's going to be two of those so we can cut a second one the same length
get the glue on it. Since I ran out of that tan thread, I bought two rolls this morning at the Walmart, Wally World. They got a lot of sewing thread in their craft department. So that's the one that's got glue on it there. And I've got a little pile of glue on this board that I keep my needle on. This is sort of a backing board for when I'm using the drill press, doing little drill projects. 0 0.5 millimeter drill bit. And the one millimeter. So I'm looking at the plan here. I'm ready for these two. But I've got an extra pulley up there that's <clears throat> oh that goes to the another set that we just overlooked a minute ago so the other pulley it looks like it ties off on the yard arm goes around the back side and comes up the front side goes through the pulley and then down to the deck so that's what this other pulley is here So we'll do the one on the side here first. Try to do all this kind of work on the bench. So <clears throat> when you go to install it on the ship, you're just doing the tie offs for all the running rigging. And you don't have to try to work this sail about three quarters of the way down. And I'm going to run this through there twice. I don't know what that little loop represents. If anybody does, you can leave a comment. But for now, I'm just going to tie this off like I did on the bottom sail that we've already installed on the ship. And I go through twice so I get a better bite on the edge of that material. And I'm doing a double, not pulling it real tight so I don't bundle up that material, and then a single on top, half hitch or whatever you call them, granny knot. And then a little dab of glue on that knot. I had to buy a new tube of glue too, finally. Or use the one I bought. So now it's just a matter of feeding this up. According to our plan. can see that I'm checking the camera I got to get this position so I can hit that hole and then we'll let those weights pull the sail down straight and then that one has got a lot, enough length on it to tie off down on the deck. Then we do the same thing with our next one here. I 
I got to find the end with the glue on it. When I ran out of thread yesterday, I had a piece that was about three foot long left over. So I was thinking I could have enough to finish this up, but after I looked at the plans again, I had two more. So there ain't no way. So I had to go get some more thread. Running rigging. They sell running rigging at Walmart. <laughs> Get a rough idea where that's at. It's about 55 millimeters. doing a little side job earlier this week and ran some ethernet cable for a router installed a receptacle put up a ceiling fan at the next door neighbor's house to where my dad lives of course, my dad was helping me a little bit. He's getting up in years, so trying to spend more time with him. And then another side job. Got another ceiling fan to do. So that takes care of those two. After we cut them tails off. And when I tied these ones on the corner, I used a bit of super glue around the knot and the material of the sail to uh, help keep that block and tackle or pulley in the position that it's in now so it looks like it's supposed to be that way. So then the next two We're going to go to this last block here. So we'll tie off around the yard arm itself and tuck it underneath the sail where, it, the sail where it's sewed on here. Get a piece of string through there. Tie it off there on the back and let it run down the back of the sail. 
and then we use the needle to come through at a certain spot so it's the same on both places we'll pick a measurement and then go up through that pulley and then down to the deck so I got to get my glue ready for that or my standing or running rigging ready ropes ready for that I pre-cut the length I need While we're here on this paper, it's underneath the uh, job that we're working on here. This is a uh, scale drawing of my yard, my property, and where the house is. This is the front of the house facing the backyard going that way. And this is facing the street up here, so that's the driveway. And uh, one of the reasons I made this print was, it's, oh, about a year ago or so, my dad worked with me and helped me install a sprinkler system in the front yard, um, encompassing the whole front and side areas. And that's where the valves are at for the sprinkler system. And it's controlled by, you know, Rainbird sprinkler controller. So the different color lines here represent the pipe in the ground in the different zones. But the reason we got this back out again is we're fixing to do a landscaping project in the front yard. And recently for my wife's birthday present, I bought her a uh, magnolia tree and planted it in the front yard there in the middle. So our plan that we're working on, each one of these squares represents one foot. The plan we're working on is doing a border with some uh, pavers or stone or something. We haven't decided on that yet, but we're going to do a border around these areas to encompass them and then put that ground level... Uh, ivy not the juniper but the, the low level dark green ivy or the well they call it ground cover it goes up about probably a foot or so once it's fully developed but I'm going to plant that in these areas here and here around the palm tree and the magnolia and there's another formosa palm here with a bush next to it. So <clears throat> this is just the beginning of the development of that plan where we want to put the ground cover plants and we'll probably add some other landscaping plants in here in a step format, lower, medium, and higher and uh, fill in that area. Then we'll put in some uh, lighting for the yard, up lights and accent lights for the landscaping. So that's another thing I've been working on. As if there isn't enough to do, I'm always doing something. That Mufasa down there coughing. He is 16 years old. And he's getting old enough where he's got a little hacking wheeze that he has to deal with every now and then. But we make sure he's got good food and water all the time and he's still kicking. He loves being in here with me and spending time working on the ship for hours on end. Okay, so we got those two last ones there for the furling of the sail. That gives us eight to tie off just for the furling of the sail control. 
We're going to have a couple more, probably. Yeah, we're going to have four more for the yard arm after we install the yard arm. So now I'm getting ready to set this up on the ship and tie off our bearing around the mast and get it secured where we can install these hangers and the lifting ropes. So that's the next step to get this out of the jig and put it on the ship. So I hope you can see this. That one rope there, should that be in the front or the back? I'm going to make that in the back. So I can see right now I've got a mistake on these cleats. They should be facing forward, not aft. These two right here. All right, in the wrong orientation. Hmm. We want all the pulleys and the foot ropes on the back. So those are right, but these are not. So when I built these mat or these yard arms, I put these 90 degrees off. It should be over here sticking up and this bearing rope is tied off on the wrong side also it's got to be on the inside so the bearing rope has got to be retied and these cleats got to be moved Back to the bench. Okay. So we got the bearing rope loose without cutting it where it was uh, tied onto the yard arm and spun it around to the back side where it should be and then got it tied off. So the other ropes that we got to do, besides the ones I got hanging here now, is the lifting rope from this double block up to this double block. I got to look in the plans for these double blocks, what they're for, but there's only one lifting double block on the second sail up. So I pre-tied a rope long enough to do both sides around the mast up here, above where we're going to hit these two pulleys. So now we go from this tie point down to the end of the yard arm, back up to that pulley, and then down to the deck. So we're going to fish that now. I've already got that pre-tied in the middle um, for both sides and I got the glue on the end of this running rigging. 
So we're going to come in the back here, not get tangled up on anything. And go in this block and then down to the deck. Now I need to see if it goes down in the front of the sail or in the back. hard to tell on this big plan. Yeah, it looks like it goes down in the back. There's on the plan it shows the sail bowled out. So you probably wouldn't want it going down in the front. So we gotta fish this. Probably through here, eh? And then down on the inside. Down through the crow's nest. We're going to shift over to the... Um, I'm going to shift over to the back of the crow's nest because the baling pan rack is on the side of the ship is in the back here. Oh, you know, behind the mast instead of in front of it. We'll get this down through where it's going to tie onto a baling pin and then do the same on this other side. Since we've got it pretty tight already go through this block Choked up a little bit. Too much on my tweezers. And where I'm standing at, I can't see the hole. There it is. through here let's see I'm thinking about how I'm going to get past these ropes side instead. And go down through the crow's nest. And then down to 
screw the bailing pin so those will go down through here behind this main sail main mast bottom sail and then they'll tie off on a bailing pin down there and the same on this side we just brought this one down it'll tie off on a bailing pin right there and then we'll only have 10 more to do even after we get those two tied off or well, maybe nine we'll look in the plans and make sure we only have one rope for this double block or two but with the eight we already got here and the two we just did that gives us 10 plus the one for lifting is 11 11 to tie off one to run <laughs> There's a little crease in that sail from being in the shipping box. I'm going to have to take my steamer and steam that out. I got one here too. I don't like a little crease in the sail. But we'll put the steamer on it. I've got a, a steamer you use for coats or whatever. A little steam gun. Works good for these sails. And I actually used that when I built my first model, the steam gun, to bend the planks for the hull before I got that soldering iron bender. I would just run that steam gun on them and get them good and hot. And the steam between the steam and the heat, these things would bend pretty easy, but. It was a lot um, <clears throat> more uncontrollable than that soldering iron gun. It could be much more precise with your bends with that thing. So let me get to terminating some of these ropes down here. Most all of them are going to go to the rack on the side. The lifting one is going to go down in the middle rack. And I got one or two double blocks down there left. Depending on what those other ones are, I got to figure out what they are too. Hanging there. And I got the cleats off. We'll just glue them back on in the right position. After we get all this rigging done on this one sail. So as you can see, we've got a lot of the running rigging done on the mid-sail mainmast. Now I'm trying to do the lifting ropes. We got this one tied off right here on the yard arm. We got to go up. Left handed shaking. Through that block. And then went in the back, so we're going to go because we came out the front. We're going to go through 
the front and come out the back. And then we gotta grab that somehow. We'll pull all the slack out. And then we gotta feed that behind there before we go through the second time. And then repeat the same process on the other side there. <clears throat> we got one main double block on the yard arm and two main double blocks on the mast. And that's what the detail. on the plan show so the other side block is going to go through the second hole in the yard arm block and then I'm looking at the plans on the wall yeah this has got to go down behind the sail instead of the front through the crow's nest. We'll have to fish that down and tie it off. We've got to get behind the shrouds too. But that takes care of one side. Yeah, I got me some new cutters here. These weren't too cheap either, like 20 bucks. But they work really good for reaching in there and they cut off stuff right on the tip. I really like them compared to the nippers I was using. So as you can see here, we got this sail mounted with all the running rigging. It's all done on this side and tied off down below. And we even got this tail out here done and tied off down below. So the last ones I'm doing today is this lifting ropes for the yard arm and we got to fish this down behind the shroud through the crow's nest and tie it off after we get the other side done so I got this piece of dowel sort of clamped into the bottom of the sail as a counterweight so I could make all the ropes that are in that running rigging around the face of the sail on the back side taunt as I tie them off down below which was a little tricky because there was eight of them all together that uh, required being tied off down on the baling pin rack here behind that shroud but all those are done and <clears throat> this counterweight sort of held everything in a nice straight line as I worked all those rigging ropes
be nice if we starch this, like starching your clothes to make them stiff. Make them stay in that position as the wind is blowing on it. But that is it for all that rigmarole. Now we got to try to get around here and do the lifting ropes. this side and our main rope is right here something back there. So that's got to go in the back. figures the holes in that block are full of wood burrs take that 0.5 millimeter drill bit and try to open it back up That's the second hole on that main block on the yard arm. And cut that tail off. This rope should be behind there, shouldn't it? And it's already got a shroud in the way. Let's see, that came out the back, so we gotta go in the back here. And down. One of my rug and running riggings came loose down there. Down to the deck. So that's the last two ropes for that sail. Lifting ropes. So that's the detail in the area we're working. 
So two double blocks up top and one double block in the bottom. I did my tie-offs out here instead of in the middle though. I went where it was right underneath the double block on top. Went up, down, back up, and then to the deck. So we gotta just tie those off down there. And that sail will be done. There's a lot of ropes on that baby. It almost looks better with that doll in there. <clears throat> it needs to be blowed out like the wind's blowing on it there. But next week We'll go to the top sail up here above the one we just did. We got the yard arm already. Hopefully everything's correct on it. I'm gonna sew it on there and hang her in position. We'll be on this side. Thanks for watching.